the scary thing about them? They don't need power. Lights, heat, nothing. That's the advantage. That's what makes him stronger. If you threaten his family, he will retaliate. We're gonna kill every last one of them. Don't shoot! War has begun. Caesar! Tell us about your role in this in this new ape saga. Um, I am a visual effects supervisor at Weta Digital, um, uh, along with Dan Lemon and Keith Miller, and of course our senior visual effects supervisor Joe Terry is kind of looking over all the projects in the in the uh, studio. So, um, so it's basically my role. Uh, first of all, to you know, I was there on set, uh, making sure that. Um, you know, even even as far back as the prep period before shooting began, uh, just working with Matt and his production designer James Chinland um, to make sure that uh, you know what we needed to bring into the to the to the process as far as the mocap side of things goes um, was going to mesh well with what they were planning to do as far as the sets to see sort of you know what we needed to be aware of knowing what those sets were going to be um, and also just generally making sure that in the standard way that you know you would do on a shoot making sure that we shoot you know, plates that are going to be uh, as effective and efficient as possible for the visual effects process um, down the track. Make it sound so easy. Made it sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned mocap before, and, and obviously that's motion capture. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, there's actually a lot of new technology that's gone into making this new film look so emotive with the apes mm -hmm. and things like that. Can you tell us about the new technology used with the actors? Yeah, obviously uh, we're using similar um, technology that we're using on Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and that for us and possibly for the world, I'm not sure, was the first time that a motion capture volume of that size was sort of taken outside and put onto a film set um, so we could actually do our ape performances alongside the, the, the uh, human actors. Um, for this film, all you had to do was look at the script and you could clearly see, wow, there's, we are living in the world of the apes so much more. There are so many more apes than there were before. We're going to be out in the rain. We're going to be out in the humidity. We're going to be getting bitten by mosquitoes. We're going to be just like dealing with the nasty elements. Um, all of these things are not conducive to motion capture, you know. Um, and so had to sort of come up with sort of, uh, you know, make the make our sort of hardware side of things more robust. We had to make um, uh, make sure that we could be as efficient as possible. Part of that was going to using wireless mocap um, cameras for part of the, the mocap array that we were using on, on, uh, on location, which allowed us, of course, to be able to put them in all sorts of places that we wouldn't have been able to maybe run a cable to, or if we could have, it would have taken you know an entire weekend to set up or something. Now we could just basically have our, our grips, go throw it up on the set someplace, calibrate the volume, and away we go. Um, so in that sense, it allowed us to be a lot more light on our feet um, and kind of keep pace with the production that um, you know was obviously you know, trying to truck through this thing as fast as, as, as possible. Um, you mentioned that obviously you had to sort of ruggedize your mocap rigs and, and do a, a few things to make it almost weatherproof. Mm -hmm. In terms of technology that uh, that you've actually used to uh, to make this new movie, mm -hmm. uh, would that have been possible a couple of years ago? Like when you were making Rise, for example? Um, certainly, like the, the wireless cameras, you know, didn't exist prior to this show. So that would have, you know, when we were doing Rise, the requirements of Rise, I think, you know, um, weren't as demanding as what we were doing on this show. Um, could we have done this back then with that technology? Yeah, we could have still, you know, put the movie out there. I, I don't think it would have been done anywhere near as efficiently. I think if, because of the fact that, bec uh, you know, the fact that we were able to take mocap volumes in places where we would have never been able to take them before allowed us to actually get the mocap data from that location instead of having to, you know, shoot a clean plate, come back, track that, look at the LiDAR scans maybe, um, try and rebuild that in, in crude forms with ramps and boxes in a, mo in, a, in a motion capture stage, and then try and pick that up you know, three months down the track from when you shot the plate. All that kind of stuff is just a big time suck. And so if you can actually get the data on the day, you know, and oh, by the way, the ape actors can interact with the human actors that are in the plates, all that kind of stuff, it just, it, it, the whole process flows so much more smoothly. It makes life easier. Yeah. Beyond obviously the, uh, the huge task of animating apes in, in <laughs> this new film, you've actually done uh, a, a lot of uh, great almost trickery and, and uh, work with, with a lot of the sets. Mm -hmm. Obviously the film's set in San Francisco, but from what I understand, you only did a couple of days of principal photography mm -hmm. in San Fran. How did you do that? Uh, we, well, basically James Chinlin gets a heap of credit for that. Um, he, you know, as, as the production designer and his, he and his team 
working with locations in, say, New Orleans, found, for example, um, you know, an intersection in, in the CBD of New Orleans, which most of the buildings in that intersection were kind of abandoned or decrepit or whatever, so that it actually allowed the production to take over sort of a four square block area for six weeks and actually make that the human colony. Um, the, which we were saying it was standing in as the intersection of California Street and Market Street in San Francisco. Um, you know, the, the, the footprint of that wasn't exact, but it was close enough, and it, it was actually a really brilliant solution for that. So that, you know, that's one example. Like, there's, there's the Ape Village um, set, which, again, was this a hugely elaborate 100-foot diameter, you know, big spiraling kind of thing made out of these logs, um, which was under construction for weeks and weeks. Um, looks absolutely amazing on screen and it basically meant that you know our apes could live in a literally real place um, and our digital extensions could just basically you know take whatever visual cues we could see there and just say all right well this is what you know our department has said San Francisco is going to look like um, therefore here's what the rest of the world looks like you know um, and so you know in that in that sense um, we had a lot of really really fantastic sort of base material to sort of expand upon. Fantastic. Thanks for talking to Gizmodo Australia and looking forward to seeing the film. Yeah, thank you. Don't you move! Should we shoot him? Maybe. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, you want a drink? <laughs> oh, all right. Easy. Easy. All right. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm saving the human race. Oh my god. We made contact. Military. They're already on their way. Gigi, you have to go. Go where? This is my home. I'm sorry, my friend.